Hi, this is Jim Malone. I'm the Executive Editorial Director for IDG Enterprises Custom Solutions Group here today for Citrix Mobile 360. I'm with Dwayne Shao, is the Director for Client Services at Indiana University. Dwayne, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be with you, Jim. We're here to talk about virtualization and a pretty ambitious initiative at Indiana University. So let's start. Dwayne, if you would talk about the genesis of the self-service applications, any device, anywhere, uh, any time initiative at IU. Uh, the the, uh, the genesis came from uh, really from uh, projects that had been ongoing for four to five years. So this was the fourth try at bringing uh, client virtualization to Indiana University. The three previous attempts didn't work for various reasons. Uh, I was lucky enough to actually be given the project at a time when, when uh, really the, the, the world of devices was starting to shift. And uh, you, could, you could get a sense that, that a new uh, opportunities in terms of mobility were starting to form. So the, uh, so the approach, given that it had failed three times previously, probably too strong of a word. We just found that it wasn't appropriate for, for deployment three times previously. Was um, uh, required a new approach to actually working with uh, the stakeholders across the university. So what we did is we engaged uh, about 100 uh, IT professionals, uh, computer engineers across the enterprise. That would be all of our campuses from the, from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state to evaluate these technologies. And I think that's what really made the big difference. So we, what we were able to do was to align uh, the stakeholders around building out a uh, an enterprise utility that they could use themselves for deploying virtual technologies, and b uh, how are we actually going to do an approach delivering those technologies uh, from that utility? And inside of that, uh, we did a bake off, and we brought in. Um, uh, a number of different virtualization vendors, and in the end, uh, working closely with Gartner and, and others, and the, and the, and the evaluation proof of concept team, uh, what we really saw as the opportunity moving forward was delivering uh, on-demand applications to any device anywhere. It was very clear that the students were entering into a consumerization model. They're coming with uh, tablets. We we uh, we have very uh, actually sizable amounts of students that have tablets as their primary device now on our campuses. And uh, so all that, all that came, all, all of that thinking came around in the proof of concept. And honestly, most of us really didn't have an idea of what the future was going to be like or what the best approach was going to be uh, to using virtualization. In the end, uh, we saw that with 110,000 students, all of them bringing at least two devices, and many of them three, that would be their smart device, their laptop computer and then their, um, their, their, their tablet, that, that we could see that the future really was around building out an environment that, uh, that they could use their applications in their labs uh, at, uh, at will. So if we just think of the two core campuses that we have at Indiana University at uh, IUPUI Indianapolis and IUB in Bloomington, Indiana, we have approximately 72,000 students. And we have around 2,600 physical seats uh, for those students in our labs. And that, that, that provides a bit of a challenge for us in terms of providing the students access to their mobile lab and to their lab environment uh, to get their ac academic pursuits fulfilled. So what we find is that the students keep asking for more and more computers, 2,600 across 72,000 really doesn't provide the kind of scale that we're looking for for providing them access to their applications. So again, when you start looking at at, at all these factors, you, we could we came up with with the um, overall premise that delivering the mobile lab as the first phase of what we were doing to all students, all 110,000 of them, was in the location that they want to be on the device that they want to use was was clearly uh, for us uh, a good approach. Yeah, well, that's a, those numbers, those are pretty impressive numbers. That's quite an undertaking, Dwayne. So when you, when you got going, what are some of the milestones you set up for yourself for this project, you know, for success, et cetera? It's, it's significant. I mean, in terms of, if, if, uh, in terms of what we wanted to accomplish, we knew that, that, you know, that, that we really couldn't accomplish everything. We have, a, you know, we have a, a schools of medicine, dentistry that use Citrix. We have... Um, 
uh, departments that have uh, needs on the internal level. It, it's a large university with, with, you know, dozens of departments and schools and, and, and campuses. So we had we had to pick carefully which approach we wanted to take in terms of that first large use case, and, that, and so we we thought that the student um, experience was the first one that we would undertake. So that was our first milestone. But really, if we look at the whole process itself, uh, our milestones were one uh, determining the effectiveness of client virtualization by engaging the entire university IT community in that discussion. Then and then those, that IT committee then put forth a recommendation that they wanted to have these technologies. So that was the first milestone. Then it was actually aligning the organization around uh, building out the technology on a stable platform that could scale. And that took us about eight months to be able to pull that off. And then so once that milestone was, was, was set, the next milestone then around nine months into the actual project beyond the POC was to be able to uh, open it up as a beta for, to all the students which we, we, we then configured and we then um, uh, kept refining the application so that by the time we now got into this, three years later, we have a very smooth functioning environment that um, you know, is very comfortable to use as printing integrated into it. It has storage integrated into it in a very innovative and unique way. So what we were able to do was really have a, a, a three-year approach from initial, uh, initially getting it running then defining a, a solid use case, which in our, for us was our students, and then giving us enough time to refine the product on, and, and letting everybody know that the product in its initial phase was beta. Because what, you, what people really need to know is that when you get into client virtualization, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And then you have to really get the alignment around the university in terms of um, uh, what they can expect out of client virtualization and what they can't expect out of it. So. So it was really a three-year process of distinct milestones from building it out, then running it as a beta, and then last year we ran it as full production service. And, and, and in that type of a structured rollout, what we found in, when the universities, uh, put, uh, the, the students put together their proposal to the president for technologies that they felt were important and technologies that they thought uh, really made a difference for them in their scholastic activities, IU Anywhere, our client virtualization environment was rated very, very high. That's exactly what we're going for. That's excellent. So before we let you go, Dwayne, just a, a couple of, piece of pieces of advice for your peers, not just in the, the EDU space, but you know, how if you had to give them one or two things to really pay attention to when they take on virtualization at this scale, what would you, what would you do? Okay. It's, it's very expensive, so you have you have to you want to really be able to communicate with your leadership on uh, why 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 you're going to be spending this money and what the potential return on investment or what the potential um, uh, value proposition is for bringing this uh, into your your uh, university or into your uh, you know, your business. Uh, they have to understand why this is moving forward. We could have done a better job of that, actually. Uh, inside of, of Indiana University, and, and and one of the things I think which is important is clear written memorandums of understanding about where you're going, and describing what phases of, of the project that you that you know that that you can expect over time, because verbal communications around virtual technology is very challenging, and and everyone will hear something you know a little bit differently uh, because they will. They, they'll see different symbols in their mind for what you're describing. So you really need to get words on paper and, and really be very, very clear on, on what those expectations are. That's, not, you know, that's really number one, just to get, get you started. Two, if, if you're a shop that really does not have um, a strong expertise in client virtualization and it is much different than what you're doing on your server side. So most, most organizations these days have strong server-side virtualization or, you know, for their for server environments, but they really haven't embarked uh, on client virtualization, which are the endpoints, right, that, 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 we're, um, that we're working with here at, at, in this realm. So you have to really look at your skill set of, of individuals that you have and, and really gauge very um, uh, appropriate, appropriately and accurately whether you have the type of staff and the expertise inside of your staff 
to be able to build up this environment and to actually take it all the way through to the end. So what we did in, in our, in our uh, delivery of this service was actually we hired professional services um, uh, from Citrix to stand up the platform itself. And it was actually fairly fast. It wasn't cheap, but, it was, it, but we got a good solid infrastructure put into place. With the staffing that I had, there was no way that we could have actually developed that out on our own. And the great thing about bringing in the professional services is that the, we, we had some very smart technical people, but yet were very untrained. But they sat next to the Citrix team in developing out that environment, so there was a lot of knowledge exchange. And there was a lot of um, you know, information about how to manage it. And we started to build in the type of intuition and instinct that was necessary uh, for them to be able to operate this thing post professional services. We then, uh, so we got them, we got them trained, and you know what, that worked out really well. Uh, but you, but if you talk with Forrester, what they'll tell you is that for anyone to be a true expert in their in their technology realm, you need 10,000 hours. And I really think that's true. So really, our our entire organization, the, the we don't have 10,000 hours of collective experience, or at least we didn't when we started. So one of the things that was very important to us was to find an industry leader that actually had experience in Citrix, and we made a hire for a Citrix engineer that had 16 years of experience. And, and But that came on about a year and a half into the project when we realized that even as hard as we were working with that team that came up with the professional services group, that, that even though they were dedicated and, and, and working long hours, we didn't have the instinct that was necessary to anticipate um, what was going to come at us in the future. So we were just there fixing today's issues, fixing today's issues, but not really knowing how to massage the environment so that it could actually move into the future in a very transparent and a very um, invisible way for the user so it just works. So you really want to have your technical expertise uh, put together correctly. And if you are going to try to do this without some serious client virtualization expertise, you're going to run into problems and it's going to delay your project and people are going to be upset. So you really need to align the skills of your staff with your project and you need to think of that carefully. So aligning the stakeholders and then building out the staff that have the proper technical expertise along with, with getting it started with professional services so that you know all your VLANs, your procurement servers, your NetScaler, all that's put together correctly. That gives you a relatively good chance of actually being successful. And I don't know what the, you know, what the uh, percentage is out in the field for delivering client virtualization, but I got to think if you're not, if you're not actually approaching it in that manner, you have a high likelihood of failure because it's it, it's highly complex technologies. It's nothing like, it's just nothing like you've ever done before. It's not like putting up a Windows file server and then deploying it and, and scoping something like that. This is really completely different technology to your organization, most likely. Excellent. Yeah, Duane, I'm reminded of that. Uh, I think I heard it or read it somewhere. You can have uh, fast, good, and cheap. Pick two. Can't do them all. So it sounds like, you know, the, you, you mentioned a couple things to remember. One is truth serum about the cost of this, and then, of course, the skills part and getting that, that uh, stakeholder buy-in so crucial. We're, we're, Duane, this is great. We could go on for a long time, but uh, we're at the end of our time for this. I'm sure this is... Uh, going to find a lot of interest. So I want to give a big thanks to Wayne Shaw, Director of Client Services, Indiana University. Thanks so much for being with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you.